Hello, and welcome to week 17 of our virtual reading series by Plagsbury and Company, the virtual reading group of Shakespeare and Company here in Minnesota. Uh, this week, we're going to be bringing you The Taming of the Shrew. Um, it's a hilarious romantic comedy by William Shakespeare. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the silly, playful show, The Taming of the Shrew. I'll fees you, with faith. A pair of stocks, you rogue! Your baggage. The slides are no rogues. Look at the chronicles. We came in with Richard the Conqueror. Therefore, Paugus Palabris, let the world slide. Sasa! Wait, you will not pay for the glasses you have burst? Not a denier. Go by St. Geronimy. Go to thy cold bed and warm thee. I know my remedy. I must go fetch the third burrow. Third or fourth or fifth burrow. I'll answer him by law. I'll not budge an inch, boy. Let him come and kindly. Uh, huntsman, I charge thee, tender well my hounds. Brack Miriam, the poor cur is embossed. And couple Clowder and the deep mouth Brock. Sayest thou not, boy, how silver made it good at the hedge corner in the coldest port? I would not lose the dog for twenty pound. Why, Bellman is as good as he, my lord. He cried upon it at the merest loss, and twice today picked out the dullest scent. Trust me, I take him for the better dog. Thou art a fool. If Echo were as fleet, I would esteem him worth a dozen such. But suck them well and look unto them all. Tomorrow I intend to hunt again. I will, my lord. What's here? One dead or drunk? Uh, see, he, see, doth he breathe? He breathes, my lord. Were he not warmed with ale that were a bed, but cold to sleep so soundly. A monstrous beast. How like a swine he lies. Grim death, how foul and loathsome is thine image, sirs. I will practice on this drunken man. What think you if he were conveyed to bed, wrapped in sweet clothes, rings upon his fingers, a most delicious banquet by his bed, and brave attendants near him when he wakes, would not the beggar then forget himself? Believe me, Lord, I, I think he cannot choose. It would seem strange unto him when he waked. Even as a flattering dream or worthless fancy. Then take him up and manage well the jest. Carry him gently to my fairest chamber and hang it round with all my wanton pictures. Balm his foul head in warm distilled waters and burn sweet wood to make the lodging sweet. Procure me music ready when he wakes to make a dulcet and hand in the sound. And if he chance to speak, be ready straight and with a low submissive reverence say, what is it your honor will command? 
Let one attend him with a silver basin full of rose water and bestrew it with flowers. Another bear him, bear the ewer, a third a diaper, and say, Will it please your lordship cool your hands? Someone be ready with a costly suit and ask him what apparel he will wear. Another tell him of his hounds and horse and that his lady mourns at his disease. Persuade him that he doth he, that he hath been lunatic, and when he says he is, say that he dreams, for he is nothing but a mighty lord. This do, and do it kindly, gentle sirs. It will be pastime passing and excellent, if it be husbanded with modesty. Lord, I warrant you we will play our part, as he shall think by our true diligence, he is no less than what we say he is. Take him up gently and to bed with him and each one to his office when he wakes. Sirrah, go see what trumpets tis that sounds. Be like some noble gentleman that means traveling, some journey to repose him here. How now, who is it? And please your honor, players that offer service to your lordship. Bid them come near. Now, fellows, you are welcome. We thank your honor. Do you intend to stay with me tonight? So please your lordship to accept our duty. With all my heart. This fellow I remember since he, since once he played a farmer's eldest son, t'was where you wooed the gentlewoman so well. I have forgot your name, but sure that part was aptly fitted and naturally performed. I think t'was Soto that your honor means. Tis very true. Thou didst it excellent. Well, you are come to me in happy time. The rather for I have some sport in hand, wherein your cunning can assist me much. There is a lord will hear you play tonight, but I am doubtful of your modesties, lest over eyeing of his odd behavior, for yet his honor never heard a play, you break into some merry passion and so offend him. For I tell you, sirs, if you should smile, he grows impatient. Fear not, my lord, we can contain ourselves were he the veriest antic in the world. Go, sirrah, take them to the buttery and give them friendly welcome every one. Let them want nothing that my house affords. Sirrah, go you to Bartholomew, my page, and see him dressed in all suits like a lady. That done, conduct him to the drunkard's chamber and call him madam, do him obeisance, tell him from me, as he will win my love, he bear himself with honorable action, such as he hath observed in noble ladies unto their lords, by them accomplished. Such duty to the drunken let drunkard let him do with soft low tongue and lowly courtesy and say what is your honor will command wherein your lady and your humble wife may show her duty and make known her love and then with kind embracements tempting kisses and with declining head into his bosom bid him share shed tears as being overjoyed to see her noble lord restored to health, who for this seven years hath esteemed him no better than a poor and loathsome beggar. And if the boy have not a woman's gift to rain a shower of commanded tears, an onion will do for, the sh for a shift, which in a napkin being close conveyed shall in despite enforce a watery eye. See this dispatched with all the haste thou canst. Anon, I'll give thee more instructions. I know the boy will well usurp the grace, voice, gait, and action of a gentlewoman. I long to hear him call the drunkard husband, and how my men will stay themselves from laughter when they do homage to this simple peasant. I'll encounsel them. Haply my presence may well abate the overmerry spleen, which otherwise would grow in two extremes. For God's sake, a pot of small ale. 
Will it please your lordship drink a cup of sack? Will it please your honor a, a taste of these corn serves? What raiment will your honor wear today? Hmm? I am Christopher Sly. Call me not honor nor lordship. I ne'er drank sack in my life. And if you give me any conserves, give me conserves of beef. Ne'er ask me what raiment I'll wear, for I have no more doublets than backs, no more stockings than legs, no more, no more shoes than feet. Nay, sometime more feet than shoes, or such shoes as my toes look through the overleather. Heaven cease this idle humor in your honor. Oh, that a mighty man of such descent, of such possessions, and so high esteem should be infused with so foul a spirit. Would you make me mad? Am, I, am, am not I Christopher Sly, old Sly, son of Burton Heath, by birth a peddler, by education a card maker, by <laughs> transmutation a bear herd, and now by present profession a tinker? I will ask Marion Hackett, the fat ale wife of Wincott, if she know me not. If she say I am not 14 pence on the score for sheer, sheer ale, score me up for the blindest knave in Christendom. What? Am I not bestraught? Here's the- Oh, this is that makes your lady mourn. Oh, oh this it is that makes your servants droop. Hence comes it that your kindred shuns your house as beaten hence by your strange lunacy, O oh, noble lord, bethinks thee, uh, bethink thee of thy birth, call home thy ancient thoughts from banishment, and banish hence these abject lowly dreams. Look how thy servants do attend on thee, each in his office ready at thy beck. Wilt thou have music? Hark, Apollo plays. Hmm. And twenty caged nightingales do sing. Or wilt thou sleep? We'll have thee to a couch, softer and sweeter than the lustful bed on purpose trimmed up for seminarius. Say thou wilt walk and we will bestrow the ground. Or wilt thou ride? Thy horses shall be trapped, their harnesses studded with gold and pearl. Dost thou love hawking? Thou hast hawks, will soar above the morning lark, or wilt thou hunt? Thy hounds shall make the welkin answer them, and fit shrill echoes from the hollow earth. Say thou wilt course, thy greyhounds are as swift as breathed stags, I fleeter than the roe. Oh, dost thou love pictures? We will fetch thee stride, Adonis, painted by a running brook, and Cytheria all in sedges hid, which seemed to move and wanton with her breath, even as the waving sedges ply with the wind. We'll show the Io as she was a maid and how she was beguiled and surprised, Ooh. as lively painted as the deed was done. Oh, Daphne roaming through the thorny wood, scratching her legs that, that one shall swear she bleeds, and at that sight shall sad Apollo weep. Oh, 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 oh. So workmanly the blood and tears are drawn. Thou art a lord, and nothing but a lord. Thou hast a lady far more beautiful than any woman in this waning age. And till the tears that she hath shed for thee like envious floods, or run her lovely face, she was the fairest creature in the world. And yet she is inferior to none. Am I such a lord? And have I such a lady? Or do I dream? Or have I dreamed until now? I do not sleep. I see, I hear, I speak, I smell sweet savors, I feel soft things upon my life. I am a lord indeed, <laughs> not a tinker, not Christopher Sly. <laughs> well, bring our lady hither to our sight and, and once again, a part of the smallest day. Oh, will it please your mightiness to wash your hands. Ah. Oh, how we joy to see your wit restored. <laughs> oh, that once more you knew but what you are. Those 15 years you have been in a dream, or when you wait 
so waked as if you slept? These 15 years? By my, by my fay, a goodly nap, but I didn't, I did never speak all of that time? Oh, yes, my lord, but very idle words. For though you lay here in this goodly chamber, yet would you say ye were beaten out of door and rail upon the hostess of the house and say you would present her at the leet because she brought stone jugs and no sealed quartz. Sometimes you would call out for Cecily Hackett. I, the woman's maid of the house. Why, sir, you know no house, nor no such maid, nor no such men as you have reckoned up as Stephen Sly and, and old John Naps of Greece and Peter Turf and Henri Pimpernel and twenty more such names and men as these which never were nor no man ever saw. Our Lord be thanked for my good amends. Amen. <laughs> I thank thee thou shalt not lose by it. How, how, how fares my noble lord? Mary, I fare well, for here is cheer enough. <laughs> uh, where is my wife? Uh, here, noble oh. lord, what is thy will with her? Uh, are you my wife and will not call me husband? My men should call me lord. I am your goodman. Uh, my... Husband and my lord, my lord and husband, I am your wife in all obedience. I know it well. <clears throat> what must I call her? Madam. Ah, I'll see, I'll see madam, or, or uh, Joan, madam. Madam and nothing else. So lords call their ladies. <sighs> <clears throat> madam, wife, they say I have dreamed and slept above some 15 year or more. I... And the time seems 30 unto me, being all this time abandoned from your bed. Oh, tis much. <laughs> Servants, leave me and her alone. Madam, <clears throat> undress you and come now to bed. Ah, oh, thrice, noble lord, um, let me entreat of you to pardon me yet for a, a night or two, or if not so, until the sun be set, for your physicians have expressly charged in peril to incur your former malady that I should yet be absent from your bed. I hope this reason stands for my excuse. Why, it stands so that I may hardly tarry so long, but I would be loath to fall into my dreams again. I... I will therefore tarry in despite of the flesh and the blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I am a messenger. Your honors players, hearing your amendment are come to play a pleasant comedy. And so your doctors hold it very neat, seeing too much sadness had congealed your blood and melancholy is the nurse of frenzy. Therefore, they thought it good to hear a play and frame your man to mirth and merriment, uh, which bars a thousand arms and lengthens life. Uh, au revoir. Mary, I will. Let them play it. Is it not a, a common to a Christmas gamble or a tumbling trick? No, no, my good lord, it is more pleasing stuff. What? Household stuff? It is a kind of history. Well, we'll see it. <clears throat> Come, madam wife, sit by my side and let the world slip. We shall ne'er be younger. <laughs> Tranio, since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I am arrived for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy, and by my father's love and leave, am armed with his good will and thy good company, my trusty servant, well approved in all. Here let us breathe and happily institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. Pisa, renowned for grave citizens, gave me my being and my father first, a merchant of great traffic through the world, Vincentio, come of the Bentivoli, Vincentio's son, Brought up in Florence, it shall become to serve all hopes conceived, to deck his fortune with his virtuous deeds. And therefore, Tranio, for the time I study virtue and that 
part of philosophy will I apply the treats of happiness by virtue specially to be achieved. Tell me thy mind, for I have Pisa left and am to Padua come, as he that leaves a shallow plash to plunge him into the deep, and with satiety seeks to quench his thirst. <laughs> Mi perdonato, gentle master mind. I am in all affected as yourself, glad that you thus continue your resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy. Only, good master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, let's be no Stoics, nor no Stocks, I pray, or so devote to Aristotle's checks as, as Ovid be an outcast quite abjured. Bulk logic with acquaintance that you have, and practice rhetoric in your common talk. Music and poesy used to quicken you, the mathematics and the metaphysics. Uh, fall to them as you find your stomach serves you. No profit grows where is no pleasure tain. Hmm? In brief, sir, study what you most affect. Grammercies, Tranio. Well, dost thou advise. No. If, Biondello, thou wert to come ashore, we could at once put us in readiness and take a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time and Badua shall beget. But stay a while. Um, <clears throat> what company is this? Master, some show to welcome us to town. Baptista, <laughs> Baptista. Gentlemen, importune me no farther, for I am firmly resolved, you know. That is not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. Uh -huh. If either of you both love Katharina, because I know you well and, uh, you know, love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. <laughs> to, to court her, rather. She's too rough for me. <laughs> there, there, Hortensio. Will you any wife? I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Mates, maid? How mean you that? No mates for you, unless you were of gentler, milder mold. <laughs> Faith, sir, you shall never need to fear. I wish it is not halfway to her heart. But if it were, doubt not her care should be to comb your noddle with a three-legged stool and paint your face and use you like a fool. Oh, such devils. Good Lord, deliver us. <laughs> and me too, good Lord. <laughs> Pushed, master, here's some good pastime toward. That wench is stark mad or wonderful froward. But in, in the other's silence do I see maids, mild behavior and sobriety. Peace, Tranio. Well said, master. Mum, and gaze your fill. Gentlemen, that I may soon make good what I have said, Bianca, get you in, and let it not displease thee, good Bianca, for I will love thee nevertheless, my girl. Oh, yeah, pretty Pete. It is best put the finger in the eye and she knew why. Mr. Content you with my discontent. Sir, to your pleasure, humbly I subscribe. My books and instruments shall be my company on them to look and practice by myself. Oh. Hark, Tranio, thou may hear uh, Minerva speak. Signor Baptista, will you be so strange? <laughs> Sorry am I that our good will affects Bianca's grief. Uh, why will you mew her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell, and make her bear the penance of her tongue? Gentlemen, content ye, I am resolved. Go in, Bianca. Oh. And for I know she taketh most delight in music, instruments, and poetry. Schoolmasters will I keep within my house, fit to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Gremio, you know any such, prefer them hither. For to cunning men, I will be very kind and liberal to mine own children and good bringing up. And so, farewell. Uh, Katharina, you may stay, for I have more to commune with Bianca. Mm, good more to commune with Bianca. <laughs> Why, and I trust I may go too, may I not? What, shall I be appointed hours as though belike I knew not what to take and what to leave? Ha! Oh, oh, 
Oh, oh, yeah, you, you may go to the devil's dam. Your gifts are so good, here's none will hold you. Their love is not so great, Hortensio, but we may blow our nails together and fast it fairly out. Our cakes dough on both sides. Farewell, yet for the love I bear, sweet Bianca, if I can by any means light on a fit man to teach her that wherein she delights, I will wish him to her father. So will I, Signor Gremio, but a word, I pray, though the nature of our quarrel yet never brooked parrel, know now, upon advice, it touches us both that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress, mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love to labor and effect one thing specially. Uh, what's that, pray? Mary, sir, to get a husband for her sister. A husband? <laughs> a devil. I say a husband. I say a devil. Thinks thou, Hortensio, though her father be very rich, uh, any man is so very a fool to be married to hell? Hush, Gremio. Though it pass your patience and mine to endure her loud alarums, why, man, there be good fellows in the world, and a man could light on them, would take her with all faults and money enough. I, I cannot tell, but I had as leaf take her dowry with this condition to be whipped at the high cross every morning. <laughs> as you say, there's small choice in rotten apples. Yeah. But come, since this bar in law makes us friends, it shall be so far forth friendly maintained till by helping Baptista's eldest daughter to a husband, we set his youngest free for a husband. Oh. And then have to it fresh. Sweet Bianca, happy man be his dole. He that runs fastest gets the ring. How say you, Signor Gremio? I am agreed. And would I have given him the best horse in Padua to begin his wooing that would thoroughly woo her, wed her, and bed her, and rid the house of her? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I pray, sir, tell me, is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? Oh, Tranio. Till I found it to be true, I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love in idleness. And now, in plainness, do confess to thee that art to me as secret and as dear as Anna to the Queen of Carthage was. Tranio, I burn, I pine, I, I perish, Tranio, if I achieve not this young modest girl. <laughs> Counsel me, Tranio, for, for I know thou canst. Assist me, Tranio, for I know thou wilt. Master, it is no time to chide you now. Affection is not rated from the heart. If love have touched you, not remains but so, redime te captum quam quest minimo. Gramercius, lad, go forward, this contents. The rest will comfort for thy counsel's sound. Master, you looked so longly on the maid, perhaps you mark not what's the pith of all? Oh, yes! I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of Aginor had that made great Jove to humble him to her hand, when with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand. Uh-huh. Saw you no more? Marked you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears might hardly endure the din? Treo, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath she did perfume the air, mm -hmm. sacred and sweet is all I saw in her. <laughs> Nay, then tis time to stir him from his trance. I pray, awake, sir. If you love the maid, bend thoughts and wits to achieve her. Hmm? Thus it stands. Her elder sister is so cursed and shrewd that till the father rid his hands of her, master, your love must live a maid at home. And therefore has he closely mewed her up because she will not be annoyed with suitors. Ah, Tranio, what a cruel father is he. But art thou not advised? He took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. 
Ay, Mary, am I, sir, and now tis plotted. I have it, Tranio. Master, for my hand, both our inventions meet and jump in one. Tell me thine first. You will be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. It is. May it be done? <laughs> Not possible. Hmm? For who shall bear your part and be in Padua here, Vincentio's son, keep house and ply his book, welcome his friends, visit his countrymen, and banquet them? Basta. Content thee, for I have it full. We have not yet been seen in any house, nor can we be distinguished by our faces for man or master. Uh -huh. Then it follows thus, thou shalt be master, Tranio, in my stead. Keep house and port and servants as I should. I will some other be, some Florentine, some Neapolitan or meaner man of Pisa. Tis hatched, and shall be so. Tranio, at once, uncase thee here. Take my uh, cloak. Uh, when Biondello comes, he waits on thee. But I will charm him first to uh, keep his tongue. So had you need. In brief, sir, sith it your pleasure is, and I am tied to be obedient, for so your father charged me at our parting, be serviceable to my son, quoth he, although I think twas in another sense. I am, I am content to be Lucentio, because so well I love Lucentio. Hmm? Tranio, be so, because Lucentio loves, and let me be a slave to achieve that maid, whose sudden sight hath thralled my wounded eye. Here comes the rogue. Sirrah, where have you been? Where have I been? Nay, uh, how now? Where are you, master? Has my fellow Tranio stolen your clothes, or you stolen his, or both? Pray, what's the news? Sirrah, come hither. Tis no time to jest, and therefore frame your manners to the time. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and my countenance on. And I, for my escape, have uh, put on his. For uh, in a quarrel, uh, since I came ashore, I uh, killed a man. And uh, fear I was descried. So uh, wait you on him, I charge you, as becomes, while I make way from hence to save my life. You understand me? I, sir, uh, ne'er a wit. And not a jot of Tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into Lucentio. <laughs> the better for him. Would I were so too. So could I, a faith boy, to have the next wish after that Lucentio indeed had Baptista's youngest daughter. But Sirrah, not for my sake, but your master's. I advise you use your manners discreetly in all kinds of companies. Hmm? When I am alone, why then I am Tranio. But in all places, else your master, Lucentio. Hmm? Tranio, let's go. One thing more rests that thyself execute to make one among these wooers. If thou ask me why, sufficeth my reasons are both good and weighty. My lord, you nod. You do not mind the play. Yes, yes, by Saint Anne do I. A good matter, surely. Comes there any more of it? Oh, my lord, tis but begun. Oh, tis a very excellent piece of work, madam lady. Would it were done. Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua, but of all, my best beloved and approved friend, Hortensio. And I trow this is his house. Here, Sirrah Grumio, knock, I say. Knock, sir? Whom should I knock? Is there any man has rebussed your worship? Villain, I say knock me here soundly. Knock you here, sir? 
Why, sir, what am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Villain, I say knock me at this gate and wrap me well, or I'll knock your knave's pate. Oh, oh, my master is grown quarrelsome. I should knock you first, and then I know after who comes from by the worst. Will it not be? Faith, sirrah, and you'll not knock, I'll ring it. I'll try how you can so far and sing it. Help! Master's help! My master is mad! Now <laughs> knock when I bid you, sirrah villain! <laughs> how now? What's the matter? My old friend Grumio and my good friend Petruchio. How do you all at Verona? <laughs> Signor Hortensio, come you to part the fray? <laughs> Con tutto il cuore ben trovato, may I say. Alla nostra casa benvenuto, molto onorato, signor mio Petruchio. Rise, Romeo, rise, we will compound this quarrel. No, oh, nay, tis no matter, sir, what he ledges in Latin. If this be not a lawful cause for me to leave his service, look you, sir, he bid me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well, was it fit for a servant to use his master so, being perhaps, for aught I see, two and thirty a peep out? Whom would to God had I well knocked at first, then had not Grumio come by the worst? A senseless villain, good Hortensio, I bade the rascal knock upon your gate and could not get him for my heart to do it. Knock at the gate? Oh, heavens! Spake you not these words plain, Sirrah, knock me here, wrap me here, knock me well, and knock me soundly, and come you now with knocking at the gate? Sirrah, be gone, or talk not, I advise you. Petruchio, patience, I am Grumio's pledge. Why, this is a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient trusty, pleasant servant, Grumio. And tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home where small experience grows. But in a few, Signor Hortensio, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased, and I have thrust myself into this maze happily to wive and thrive as best I may. Crowns in my purse I have and goods at home, and so am come abroad to see the world. Petruchio, shall I then come roundly to thee and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? Thou dost thank me but a little for my counsel, and yet I promise you uh, pro she shall be rich and very rich, but had I too much my friend, and I'll not wish thee to her. Signor Hortensio, twixt such friends as we, few words suffice, and therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, as wealth is burden of my wooing dance, be she as foul as Florentius love, as old as Sibyl, and as cursed and shrewd as Socrates Xantippe, or a worse, she moves me not, or not removes at least affection's edge in me, where she is as rough as are the swelling Adriatic seas, I come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then haply in Padua. Nay. Nay, look you, sir, he tells you flatly what his mind is. Why, give him gold enough and marry him to a puppet or an aglet baby or an old trot with ne'er a tooth in her head, though she have as many diseases as two and fifty horses. What, nothing comes amiss, so money comes with all. Petruchio, since we are stepped thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife with wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is fault enough, is that she is intolerable, cursed, and shrewd and froward, so beyond all measure, that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. <laughs> Hortensio, peace. Thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her father's name, and tis enough, for I will board her, though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack. Her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman. Her name is Catarina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. <laughs> 
I know her father, though I know not her, and he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her, and therefore let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter, unless you will accompany me thither. Uh, I pray you, sir, let him go while the humor lasts. And my word, and she knew him as well as I do, she would think scolding would do little good upon him. Oh, she may perhaps call him half a score knaves or so. Why, that's nothing. And he began once he'll rail in his rope tricks. I'll tell you what, sir, and she stand him but a little, he will throw a figure in her face and so disfigure her with it that she shall have no more eyes to see with all than a cat. You know him not, sir. Shut up, Grumio. Terry, Petruchio, I must go with thee. For in Baptista's keep my treasure is. He hath the jewel of my life in hold, his youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca. And her withholds from me and other more suitors to her and rivals in my love, supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed that ever Caterina will be wooed. Therefore this order hath Baptista take that none shall have access unto Bianca till Catherine the Cursed have got a husband. <laughs> Catherine the Cursed. <laughs> a title for a maid of all titles, the worst. <laughs> now, shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me disguised in sober robes to old Baptista as a schoolmaster, well seen in music, to instruct Bianca? So, that, that so I may, by this device at least, have leave and leisure to make love to her and unsuspected court her by myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, here's no knavery. See, to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their heads together. Master, master, look about you. Who goes there, huh? <laughs> Peace, Romeo. It is the rival of my love. Petruchio, mm -hmm. stand by a while. Mm -hmm. A proper striker <clears throat> and an amorous. <laughs> well, very well. I have perused the note. Hark you, sir. I have them very fairly bound. All books of love. See that in any hand. And see you read no other lectures to her. You understand me? Over and besides, Signor Baptista's liberality, I'll mend it with a largesse. Take your paper, too, and let me have them very well perfumed and she is sweeter than perfume itself to whom they go to. What will you read to her? <clears throat> uh, whatever I read to her, I'll leave for you as for my patron stand you so uh, assured as firmly as uh, yourself were still in place. Uh, yeah, and perhaps with more successful words than you. <laughs> Unless you are a scholar, sir. Oh, this learning, what a thing it is. <laughs> oh, this woodcock, what an ass it is. Yes, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God save you, Signor Gremio. And you are well met, Signor Hortensio. Uh, Trow you whither I am going <laughs> to Signor uh, Baptista Minola. I promise to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca. <laughs> and by good fortune, I have lighted well on this young man for learning and behavior fit for her turn. Well read in poetry and other books. Good ones, I warrant ye. <laughs> well, and I have met a gentleman hath promised me to help me to another, a fine musician to instruct our mistress. So shall I know wit be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. Beloved of me, and that my deed shall prove. <laughs> and that his bag shall prove. <clears throat> Remio, tis now no time to vent our love. Listen to me, and if you speak me fair, I'll tell you news indifferent good for either. Here is a gentleman whom, by chance I met, upon agreement from us to his liking, will undertake to woo cursed Catherine, yea, and to marry her, if her dowry please. Oh, so said, so done as well, Hortensio. Have you told him all her faults? I know she is an irksome, brawling scold. If that be all, masters, I hear no harm. No, sayest me so, friend. Uh, what countryman? <laughs> Born in Verona, old Antonio's son. My father dead, my fortune lives for me. And I do hope good days and long to see. 
No, such a life with such a wife were strange. But if you have a stomach to it, God's name, you shall have me assisting you in all. But will you woo this wildcat? Will I live? <laughs> will he woo her? Hi, or I'll hang her. Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar chafed with sweat? Have I not heard great ordnance in the field and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Have I not in a pitched battle heard loud larums, neighing steeds and trumpets clang? And do you tell me of a woman's tongue that gives not half so great a blow to hear as will a chestnut in a farmer's fire? Pop. Tush, tush, fear boys with bugs. For he fears none. Hortensio, hark, this gentleman is happily arrived. My mind presumes for his own good and ours. <laughs> I promised we would be contributors and bear his charge of wooing whatsoever. So we will, provided that he win her. Oh, I would, I were as sure of a good dinner. Gentlemen, God save you. If I may be bold, tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signor Baptista Minola? <laughs> he that has the two fair daughters, is it he you mean? Even he, Biondello. Hark you, sir, you mean not her to a um, Perhaps him and her, sir. What have you to do? Not her that chides, sir, at any hand, I pray. I have no chiders, sir. Biondello lets away. I'll be gone, Tranio. Sure, a word, ere you go. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of, yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it any offense? No, if without more words you will get you hence. Why, sir, I pray, are not the streets as free for me as for you? But so is not she. For what reason, I beseech you? For this reason, if you'll know, that she's the choice love of Signor Gremio. <laughs> that she's the chosen of Signor Hortensio. Softly, my masters, if you be gentlemen, do me this right. Hear me with patience. Hmm? Baptista is a noble gentleman to whom my father is not all unknown, and were his daughter fairer than she is, she may have more suitors have, and me for one. Fair Lita's daughter had a thousand wooers, then well one more may fair Bianca have, hmm? And so she shall. Lucentio shall make one, though Paris came in hope to speed alone. What? This gentleman will all talk us all. <laughs> Sir, give him head. I know he'll prove a jade. Hortensio, to what end are all these words? Sir, let me be so bold as ask you, did you yet ever see Baptista's daughter? No, sir, but here I do that she he hath two. The one as famous for a scolding tongue as is the other for beauteous modesty. Sir, sir, the first's for me. Let her go by. Yea, leave that labor to great Heracles, and let it be more than Alcides twelve. <laughs> Sir, understand you this of me in sooth. The youngest daughter, whom you hearken for, her father keeps from all access of suitors, and will not promise her to any man until the elder sister first be wed. The younger then is free, and not before. If it be so, sir, that you are the man must stead us all, and me amongst the rest, and if you break the ice and do this feat, achieve the elder, set the younger free for our access, whose hap shall have be to have her will not so graceless be to be ingrate. Sir, you say well, and well you do conceive. And since you do profess to be a suitor, you must, as we do, gratify this gentleman to whom we all rest generally beholden. <laughs> Sir, I shall not be slack. In sign whereof, please ye we may contrive this afternoon and quaff carouses to our mistress' health, and do as adversaries do in law. Strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. <laughs> oh, excellent motion. Fellows, let's be gone. The motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruchio, I shall be your benvenuto.
Goodness, sister, wrong me or not, nor wrong yourself to make a bomb made and a slave of me. That I disdain. But, but, for all these other gods, unfind my hand. I'll pull them off myself. Yea, all to my raiment, to, to my petticoat, or what you will, so well I know my duty to my elders. Of all thy suitors here, I charge thee, tell whom thou lovest best. See thou, dissemble not. Come on. Leave me, sister. Of all the men alive, I never yet beheld a special face for which I can fancy more than any other. Minion, thou, <laughs> thou liest. Is it not Hortensio? Uh, if you affect him, here I swear I'll plead for you myself. But uh, you shall have him. Oh, okay. Then you belike fancy riches more, and you will have Grumio to keep you fair. It is for Grumio that you that, that you envy me so? Nay, nay, then, then you just. And now I will perceive that you have justed all but the while. I pray thee, sister, untie my hands. If that be jest, then all the rest was so. Ow! Why, how now, dame? Whence grows this insolence? Bianca, stand aside. Oh, poor girl, she weeps. Go ply thy needle, meddle not with her. For shame, thou hilding of a devilish spirit. Why dost thou wrong her that did never wrong thee? When did she cross thee with a bitter word? Her silence flouts me, and I'll be revenged. Watch in my sight, Bianca, get thee in. What? Will you not suffer me? Nay, now I see she is your treasure. She must have a husband, and I must dance barefoot on her wedding day, and for your love to lead her apes in hell. Talk not to me. I will go sit and weep till I can find occasion of revenge. Mm, was ever gentleman thus grieved as I? Uh, but who comes here? A, a good morrow, neighbor Baptista. <laughs> good morrow, neighbor uh, Grumio. God save you, gentlemen. And you, good sir, pray, have you not a daughter called Katerina Fair and Virtuous? I have a daughter, sir, called Katharina. You are too blunt. Go to it orderly. You wrong me, Signor Gremio. Give me leave. I am a gentleman of Verona, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, embold to show myself a forward guest within your house, to make mine eye the witness of that report which I so oft have heard. And for an entrance to my entertainment, I do present you with a man of mine, cunning in music and the mathematics, to instruct her fully in those sciences whereof I know she is not ignorant, except of him or else you do me wrong. His name is Licio, born in Mantua. You are welcome, sir, and he for your good sake. But for my daughter, Katharina, this I know, she is not for your turn. The more my grief. I see you do not mean to part with her or else you like not my company. Mistake me not, I speak not, but as I find. Whence are you, sir? What may I call your name? Petruchio is my name, Antonio's son, a man well known throughout all Italy. I know him well, you are welcome for his sake. Saving your tale, Petruchio, I pray, uh, let us that our poor petitioners too uh, speak to Beccari. Uh, you are marvelous forward. Uh, pardon me, Signor Gremio, I would fain be doing. I doubt it not, sir, but you will curse your wooing. Neighbor, this is a gift very grateful, I am sure of it. To express the like kindness, myself that have been more kindly beholding you to you than any freely freely give unto you this young scholar that hath been long studying at Reims as cunning in Greek, Latin, and other languages as the other as in music and mathematics. His name is Cambio. 
pray, accept his service. <laughs> A thousand thanks, Senor Gremio. Welcome, good cambio. But gentle sir, methinks you walk like a stranger. May I be so bold to know the cause of your coming? Pardon me, sir. The boldness is mine own. That being a stranger in this city here do make myself a suitor to your daughter, unto Bianca, fair and virtuous. Nor is your firm resolve unknown to me in the preferment of the eldest sister. This liberty is all that I request that upon knowledge of my parentage, I may have welcome amongst the rest that woo and free access and favor as the rest. And toward the education of your daughters, I here bestow a simple instrument and this uh, small packet of Greek and Latin books. If you accept them, then their worth is great. Lucetio is your name of whence, I pray? Of Pisa, sir, son to Vincentio. A mighty man of Pisa, by report, I know him well. You are very welcome, sir. Take you the loot and you the set of books. You shall go see your pupils presently. Holla within! Sir, lead these gentlemen to my daughters and tell them both, these are their tutors. Bid them use them well. We will go walk a little in the orchard and then to dinner. You are passing welcome. And so I pray to you all to think yourselves. Signor Baptista, my business asketh haste, and every day I cannot come to woo. You knew my father well, and in him me, left solely heir to all his lands and goods, which I have bettered rather than decreased. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? Uh, well, after my death, the one half of my lands and in possession, 20,000 crowns. And for that dowry, I'll assure her of her widowhood, be it that she survives me, in all my lands and leases whatsoever. Let specialties be therefore drawn between us that covenants may be kept on either hand. Aye, when the special thing is well obtained, that is her love, for that is all in all. Oh, why? That is nothing, for I tell you, father, I am as peremptory as she proud-minded, and, and where two raging fires meet together, they do consume the thing that feeds their fury. Though little fire grows great with a little wind, yet extreme gusts will blow out fire and all. So I to her, and so she yields to me, for I am rough and woo not like a babe. Well, mayest thou woo, and happy be thy speed but be thou armed for some unhappy words. Aye, to the proof as mountains are for winds that shake not, though they blow perpetually. Oh, how now, my friend? Why dost thou look so pale? For, fe um, for fear, I promise you, if I look pale. What, will my daughter prove a good musician? I think she'll soon approve a soldier. Iron may hold with her, but never a lute. Oh, why then thou canst not break her to the lute? Why, no, for she has broke the lute to me. <laughs> I did but tell her she mistook her frets and bowed her hand to teach her fingering when with a most impatient devilish spirit, frets call you these, quoth she, I'll fume with them. And with that word, she struck me on the head and through the instrument, my pate made way. And there I stood amazed for a while as on the pillory looking through the lute while she did call me rascal fiddler and twangling jack with 20 such wild terms as, as she studied to misuse me so. Now by the world, it is a lusty wench. I love her 10 times more than e'er I did. <laughs> How I long to have some chat with her. Well, uh, go with me and... Be not so discomfited. Proceed in practice with my younger daughter. She's apt to learn and thankful for good turns. Signor Petruccio, will you go with us or shall I send my daughter Kate to you? I pray you do. I'll attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. <laughs> Say that she rail, then I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frown, I'll say she looks as clear as morning roses newly washed with dew. Say she be mute and will not speak a word, then I'll commend her volubility and say she uttereth piercing eloquence. If she do bid me pack, I'll give her thanks as though she bid me stay by her a week. If she deny to wed, 
I'll crave the day when I shall ask the Baines and when be married. <laughs> Here she comes now. And now Petruchio, speak. <clears throat> what? Stop. Good morrow, Kate. <laughs> For that's your name, I hear. Well, well, have you heard, but something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine that do talk of me. You lie, i' faith, for you are called plain Kate, well, and bunny Kate, and sometimes Kate the Cursed. But, Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom, Kate of Kate Hall, my super dainty Kate, for dainties are all Kates, and therefore Kate, Take this of me, Kate, of my consolation. Hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtue spoke of and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs, myself am moved to woo thee for my wife. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew at the first you were a movable. Why, what's a movable? A joined stool. <gasps> Thou hast hit it, boop. <laughs> Come and sit on me. Uh, asses are made to bear, and so are you. Uh, women are made to bear, so are you. No such jade as you, if you mean me. <laughs> so... Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee for knowing thee to be but young and light. Mm, too light for such a swain as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. No, should be, <laughs> should buzz. Mm, well, tan and like a buzzard. Oh, slow-winged turtle. Shall a buzzard take thee? Aye, for a turtle as he takes a buzzard. <laughs> come, come, you wasp. Faith, you are too angry. Oh, if I be waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy is then to pluck it out. Mm, hi, if the fool could find where it lies. <laughs> Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails, and so farewell. What, with my tongue in your tail? <laughs> Nay, come again, good Kate. I am a gentleman. Oh, well, that I'll try. <laughs> I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. Oh, well, so may you lose your arms. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. And if no gentleman, why then, no arms. Mm -hmm. A herald, Kate, <laughs> uh, put me in my books. Mm. Well, what is your crest? A coxcomb? A combless cock, so Kate will be my hen. Mm, no cock of mine, you crow too, like a craven. Nay, come, Kate, come. You must not look so sour. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why, there's no, here there's no crab, and therefore look not sour. Oh, well, there is, there is. Then show it me. Hmm. Had I a glass, I would. Mm, what, you mean my face? Hmm, well aimed of such a young one. <laughs> now, by St. George, I am too young for you. Yeah, yet you are so withered. Tis with cares. Oh, well, I care not. <laughs> Nay, hear you, Kate. In sooth, you scape not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. Twas told me you were rough and coy and sullen, and now I find report a very liar, for thou art pleasant, gamesome, passing courteous, but slow in speech, yet sweet as springtime flowers. Thou canst not frown, thou canst not look asconce, nor bite the lip as angry wenches will, nor hast thou pleasure to be cross in talk, but thou with mildness entertainst thy wooers, with gentle conference, soft and affable. Why does the world report that Kate doth limp? 
Oh, slanderous world. Kate, like the hazel twig, is straight and slender and as brown in hue as hazelnuts and sweeter than the kernels. <laughs> Let me see thee walk. Thou dost not halt. Go, fool, and whom thou keeps command. Did ever Diane so become a grove as Kate, this chamber with her princely gait? <laughs> Uh, be thou, Diane, and let her be Kate, and then let Kate be chaste, and Diane sportful. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore from my mother wit. <laughs> A witty mother, witless else her son. Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Mary, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. And therefore setting all this chat aside, thus in plain terms, your father hath consented that you shall be my wife, your dowry greed on, and will you, nil you, I will marry you. Oh. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn, for by this light whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty that doth make me like thee well, thou must be married to no man but me, for I am he am born to tame you, Kate, and bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable as other household Kate's. Here comes your father, never make denial. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, Signor Petruchio, how speed you with my daughter? How but well, sir, how but well. It were impossible I should speed amiss. Why, how now? Daughter Catherine in the, your dumps. Well, call you me daughter. Now I promise you, you have showed a tender fatherly regard to wish me wed to a one half lunatic, a madcap ruffian and a swearing jack that thinks with oaths to face the matter out. Father, tis thus, yourself and all the world that talked of her have talked amiss of her. If she be cursed, it is for policy. For she's not froward, but modest as the dove. She is not hot, but temperate as the morn. For patience, she will prove a second Chrysel and Roman Lucrece for her chastity. And to conclude, we have greed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. Hark, uh, uh, Petruchio, she says she'll see thee hanged first. <laughs> is this your speeding? Mm. Nay, the good night our part. Be patient, gentlemen. I choose her for myself. I don't. If she be pleased, she and I be pleased. What's that to you? Tis bargain twixt us twain being alone that she shall still be cursed in company. I tell you, tis <gasps> incredible to believe how much she loves me. Hmm. The kindest Kate, she hung about my neck and kiss on kiss. She vied so fast, protesting oath on oath that in a twink, she won me to her love. Mm, oh, you ah! are novices. Tis a world to see how tame when men and women are alone. A meacock wretch can make the courteous shrew. Give me thy hand, Kate. I will unto Venice to buy apparel against the wedding day. Provide the feast, father, and bid the guests. I will be sure my Catherine shall be fine. Mm, I know not what to say, but give me your hands. God send you joy, Petruchio. Tis a match. Amen, say we. We will be witnesses. Father and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I will to Venice. Sunday comes apace. We will have rings and things and fine array and kiss me, Kate. We will be married a Sunday. Ah! <laughs> Was ever match clapped up so suddenly? <laughs> Faith, gentlemen, now I play a merchant's part and venture madly on a desperate mart. Was a commodity lay fretting by you to bring you gain or perish on the seas? Again, I think is quiet in the match. Uh, no doubt, but he has got a quiet catch. <laughs> but, but now, Baptista, to your younger daughter, now is the day we have long looked for. I am your neighbor and was suitor first. And I am one that love Bianca more than words can witness or your thoughts can guess. Youngling, thou canst not love so dear as I. <laughs> Greybeard, thy love doth freeze. But thine doth fry. Skipper, stand back. Tis age that nourisheth it. But youth in ladies' eyes that flourisheth it. Content you, gentlemen. I will compound this strife. Tis deeds must win the prize. And he of both that can assure my daughter greatest dower shall have my Bianca's love. 
say, Senor Gremio? What can you assure her? Uh, first, you know, as you know, my house within the city is richly furnished with plate and gold, basins and ewers to lave her dainty hands, my hangings all of Tyrian tapestry, in ivory coffers I have stuffed my crowns, in cypress chests my heiress counterpoint, uh, costly apparel, tents and canopies, fine linen, uh, turkey cushions bossed with pearl, valance of Venice gold in needlework, pewters and brass, and all things that belong to house and housekeeping. Then, on my farm, I have a hundred milk kind to the pail, six score fat oxen standing in my stalls, and all things answerable to this portion. Uh, myself am stuck in years, I must confess. And if I die tomorrow, this is hers. If whilst I live, she will be only mine. <laughs> that only came well in. Sir, list to me. I am my father's heir and only son. If I may have your daughter to my wife, I'll leave her houses three or four as good within rich piece of walls as any one old Sir Gremio has in Padua. Besides... 2,000 ducats a year of fruitful land, all which shall be her jointer. Hmm? What? <coughs> Have I pinched you, Signor Gremio? 2,000 ducats by the year of land. Mm -hmm. My land amounts not so much in all. That she shall have, besides an argosy that now is lying in Marseille Road. What? Have I choked you with an argosy? <laughs> Gremio, tis known my father hath no less than three great argosies, besides two galleuses and twelve tight galleys. These I will assure her, and twice as much what heir thou offerest next. Nay, I have offered it all, and I have no more. And she can no, have no more than all I have. If you like me, she shall have me and mine. <laughs> Why, then the maid is mine from all the world by your firm promise. Gremio is outvied. <laughs> I must confess, your offer is the best, and let your father make her the assurance. She is your own, else she must pardon me. If you should die before him, where's her dapper? That's but a cavil. He is old, I young. And may young men not die as well as old? Well, gentlemen, I am thus resolved. On Sunday next, you know, my daughter Catherine is to be married. Now on the Sunday following shall Bianca be bride to you, if you make this assurance. If not, to Signor Gremio. So I take my leave and thank you both. Adieu, good neighbor. Now I fear thee not. Sarai, young gamester, your father were a fool to give you the all, and in his waning age set foot under thy table. Tut, a toy, an old Italian fox, is not so kind, my boy. <laughs> Vengeance on your crafty, withered hide. Yet I have faced it with a card of ten. Tis my head to do my master good. I see no reason but suppose Lucentio must get a father called supposed Vincentio, and that's a wonder. Fathers commonly do get their children, but in this case of wooing, a child shall get a sire. If I fail not of my cunning... <clears throat> Fidele, forbear, you grow too forward, sir. Have you soon so forgot the entertainment? Her sister Catherine welcomed you with all? Uh, but, uh, wrangling pedant, this is the patroness of heavenly harmony. Then give me leave to have prerogative, and when in music we have spent an hour, your lecture shall have leisure for as much. <laughs> Preposterous ass! That have never read so far to know the cause why music was ordained. 
Was it not to refresh the mind of man after his studies or his usual pain? Then give me leave to read <laughs> philosophy. Ah, and while I pause, uh, sort of in your harmony. Sure, I will not bear these braves of that. All right, gentlemen, you do me double wrong to strive for that which rest, resteth in my choice. I'm no breaching scholar or in the schools. I'll be not tied to hours nor pointed times, but learn my lessons as I please myself. And to cut off all strife, here, sit me down, take you your instrument, play you the wiles. His lecture will be done ere you have tuned. You'll leave his lecture when I'm in tune? That will be never. Uh, tune your instrument. Uh, where left we last? Uh, here, madam. Uh, hic ibat simua, hic est sigia telus, hic steteret priami regia sassanis. Construe them. Uh, uh, bat, uh, as I told you before, uh, c'est moi, uh, I am Lucentio. Uh, hic est, uh, son unto Vincentio of Pisa, uh, <laughs> sid uh, disguised thus, uh, to get your love, uh, hic steteret, and that Lucentio that comes a-wooing, uh, Priami is my man Tranio, Regia, uh, bearing my port, uh, Salsa Sanis, uh, that we might beguile the old pantaloon. Madam, my instrument's in tune. Let's hear. Ah, oh, the treble jars. <laughs> Beat in the hall, man, and tune again. Well, now let me see if I can construe it. Hic ibat Samoas, I know you not. Hic est segura tellus, I trust you not. Hic sterat priami, take heed he hear us not. Regia, presume not. Salicinus, despair not. Madam, it is now in June. All but the bass. The bass, the bass is right, it is the bass knave that jars. How fiery and forward our pedant is. Now for my life, life the knave doth court my love. Pedescule, I'll watch you better yet. In time I may believe, yet I mistrust. Uh, mistrust it not, for sure Asides was Ajax, called so from his grandfather. I must believe my master, else I promise you. I should be arguing till upon that doubt, but let it rest. Now Lethio to you. Good master, take it not unkindly, pray, that I have been thus pleasant with you both. You may go walk and give me leave a while. My lessons make no music in three parts. Oh, Are you so formal, sir? Well, I must wait and watch with all. For but I be deceived, our fine musician groweth amorous. Madam... Before you touch the instrument, to learn the order of my fingering, I must begin with rudiments of my art. Uh, to teach you gamut in a briefer sort, more pleasant, pretty, and effectual than hath been taught by any of my trade. And there it is in writing, barely drawn. Why, I am past my gamut long ago. Yeah, no, but yeah, but yeah read, the, read the gamut of Hortensio. Uh, okay. Gamut I am, the ground of all accord. A re to plead Hortensia's passion. B me, Bianca, take him for thy lord. C fa ut that loves with all affection. D sol re one cleft two notes have I. Oh, oh, gross. Uh, Ella me, show pity or I die. Rose. Call you this gamut? Tut, I like it not. Old fashions please me best. I'm not so nice to change true rules for odd inventions. Mistress, 
Your father prays you leave your books and help to dress your sister's finger up. You know tomorrow is the wedding day. Farewell, sweet masters both. I must be gone. Is Faith, mistress, then uh, I have no cause to stay. But I have cause to pry into this pedant. Methinks he looks as though he were in love. Yet if thy thoughts, Bianca, be so humble to cast thy wandering eyes on every stale, seize thee that list. If once I find thee ranging, Hortensio will be quit with thee by changing. Exit. Signor Lucentio, this is the appointed day that Catherine and Petruchio should be married, and yet we hear not of our son-in-law. What will be said? What mockery will it be to want the bridegroom and the priest attends to speak the ceremonial rites of marriage? What says Lucentio to this shame of ours? No shame, but mine. I must forsooth be forced to give my hand opposed against my heart unto a mad brain rudesby full of spleen who wooed in haste and means to wed at leisure. I told you I, he was a frantic fool, hiding his bitter jests in blunt behavior. And to be noted for a merry man, he'll woo, woo a thousand. Point the day of marriage, make friends, invite, proclaim the bands. Yet never means to wed where he hath wooed. And now must the world point at poor Catherine and say, Oh, look, there's mad Petruchio's wife. If it would please him, come and marry her. Patience, good Catherine, and Baptista too. Upon my life, Petruchio means but well. Whatever fortune stays him from his word, th though he be blunt, I know him passing wise. Oh, please. Though he be merry, yet withal, he's honest. Would Catherine had never seen him, though. <sighs> Go, girl. I cannot blame thee now to weep, for such an injury would vex a very saint. Much more a shrew of thy impatient humor. Master, master, news, old news, and such news as you never heard of. Is it new or old, too? How may that be? Why, is it not news to hear of Petruchio's coming? Is he come? Why, no, sir. <sighs> what, then? Uh, he is coming. When will he be here? When he stands where I am and sees you there. But say, what to thine old news? Why, Petruchio is coming in a new hat and old jerk. A pair of old breeches, thrice turned, a pair of boots that have been candle cases, one buckled, the other laced. An old rusty sword that had taken out of the town armory with broken hilt, chapless, with two broken points, <laughs> his horse hit with an old mothy saddle and stirrups of no kindred, besides possessed with the, the ganders, like to the mose in the chine, troubled with lampless, infected with fashions, full of wingles, spent with spavins, rayed with the yellows, past cure of the fives, stark spoiled with the staggers, be gnawed with the bots, swayed in the back, shoulder shot and near leg of four, and with a half cheap bit and a headstraw of sheet leather, which we restrained to keep him from stumbling, had also burst. And now, repaired with knots, one girl six times pieced and a woman's crupper of velour which hath two letters for her name fairly set down in studs and here and there pieced with pack thread. Who comes with him? Oh, sir, his lackey for all the world comparison like the horse with a linen stock on one leg and a kersey boot hose on the other, girdered with a red and blue list, an old hat, and the humor of forty fancies pricked in it for a feather, a, a monster, a very monster in apparel, and not like a Christian footboy or a gentleman's lackey. 
<laughs> tis, uh, tis some odd humor pricks him to this fashion. Yet oftentimes he goes but mean apparelled. <laughs> I, I am glad he's come, however so he comes. Why, sir, he comes not. Didst thou not say he comes? Who? That Petruchio came. I, that Petruchio came. But no, sir. I say his horse comes with him on his back. Why, that's all one. Nay, by St. Jamie, I hold you a penny. A horse and a man is more than one, and yet not many. <sighs> Come, where be these gallons? Who's at home? Uh, you are welcome, sir. And yet, I come not well. And yet you halt not. Not so well apparelled as I wish you were. Oh, were it better I should rush in thus. Oh, but where's Kate? Where's my lovely bride? How does my father, gentles, methinks you frown? And wherefore gaze this goodly company as if they saw some wondrous monument, some comet or unusual prodigy? Why, sir, you know this is your wedding day. First we were sad, fearing you would not come. Now sadder that you come so unprovided. Fie doth this habit, shame to your estate, an eyesore to our solemn festival. And tell us what occasion of import hath all so long detained you from your wife, and sent you hither, so unlike yourself. Tedious it were to tell, and harsh to hear. Sufficeth, I am come to keep my word, though in some part enforced to digress, which at more leisure I will so excuse, as you shall well be satisfied with all but... Where's Kate? I stay too long from her. The morning wears. Tis time we were at church. See not your bride in these unreverent robes. Go to my chamber. Put on clothes of mine. Not I. Believe me. Thus I'll visit her. But thus I trust you will not marry her. <laughs> Good sooth. Even thus. Therefore had done with words. To me she's married. Not unto my clothes. Could I repair what she will wear in me as I can change these poor accoutrements? <laughs> Twere well for Kate and better for myself. But what a fool am I to chat with you when I should bid good morrow to my bride and seal the title with a lovely kiss. <laughs> he, uh, he hath some meaning in this mad attire. We will persuade him, be it possible, to put on better ere he go to church. Hmm? I'll, I'll after him and see the event of this. <clears throat> but sir, love concern us, concerneth us to add her father's liking, which to bring to pass as before imparted to your worship, I am to get a man, whate'er he be, it skills not much, will fit him to our turn, and he shall be Vincencio of Pisa, and make assurance here in Padua of greater sums than I have promised. So shall you quietly enjoy your hope, and marry sweet Bianca with consent. Hmm? Were it not that my fellow schoolmaster doth watch Bianca's steps so narrowly, twere good, methinks, to steal our marriage, which, once performed, let all the world say no. I'll keep mine own, despite of all the world. That by degrees we mean to look into and watch our vantage in this business. We'll overreach the greybeard Gremio, the narrow prying father Minola, the quaint musician amorous Licio, all for my master's sake, Lucentio. In your Gremio came you from the church as willingly as e'er I came from school. <laughs> and is the bride and bridegroom coming home? A bridegroom, say you, tis a groom indeed, a, a grumbling groom, and that the girl shall find. <laughs> Cursed her than she? <laughs> Why, tis impossible. <laughs> Why, he's a devil. A very devil, the devil's de a very fiend. Uh, well, she's a devil, <laughs> a devil, <laughs> the devil's dam. Yeah, but she's a lamb, a dove, a fool to him. I tell you, Signor Lucentio, when the priest should ask if Catherine should be his wife, I by God's wounds, quoth he and swore so loud that all amazed the priest let fall the book. 
And as he stooped again to take it up, the mad brain bridegroom took him such a cuff that down fell priest and book and book and priest. Now take them up, quoth he of any list. <laughs> what said the wench when he rose again? Trembled and shook. For why? He stamped and swore as if the vicar meant to cousin him. But after many uh, ceremonies done, he calls for wine. A health, quoth he, as if he had been aboard carousing to his mates after a storm, quaffed off the muscatel and threw off the stops all in the sexton's face, having no other reason but that his beard grew thin and hungrily and seemed to ask him sops as he was drinking. This done, he took the bride about the neck and kissed her lips with such a clamorous smack that all at the parting, all the church did echo. <laughs> and see, I seeing this came thence for very shame. And after me, I know the rout is coming. <laughs> such a mad marriage never was before. <laughs> Hark, I hear the minstrels play. Oh, oh. <laughs> Gentlemen and friends, I thank you for your pains. I know you think to dine with me today and have prepared great store of wedding cheer, but so it is my haste doth call me hence, and therefore here I mean to take my leave. It's uh, possible you will away tonight? I must be away today before night come. Make it no wonder, if you knew my business, you would entreat me rather go than stay. And honest company, I thank you all that have beheld me give away myself to this most patient, sweet, and virtuous wife. Dine with my father, drink a health to me, for I must hence and farewell to you all. But let us entreat you stay till after dinner. It may not be. Uh, let, let me entreat you. <laughs> it cannot be. Let me entreat you. I am content. Are you content to stay? I am content. You shall entreat me to stay, and yet not stay. Entreat me how you can. <laughs> what? Now, if you love me, stay. Groomio, my horse. <sighs> Aye, sir. They be ready. The oats have eaten the horses. Nay, then. Do what thou canst. I will not go today, nor nor tomorrow, not till I please myself, <laughs> okay? The door is open, sir, there lies your way. You may be jogging while your boots are green. For me, I'll not be gone till I please myself. Tis like you'll prove a jolly, surly groom that take it on you at the first so roundly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, content thee, prithee. Be not angry. Mm, I will be angry. What hast thou to do? Father, be quiet. He shall stay my leisure. Hi, Mary, sir. Now it begins to work. <laughs> Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool if she had not a spirit to resist. They shall go forward, Kate, at thy command. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go to the feast and revel, and domineer, carouse full measure to her maidenhead. Be mad and merry, or go hang yourselves. <laughs> but for my bonny Kate, she must with me. Nay, look not big, nor stamp, nor stare, nor fret. I will be master of what is mine own. She is my goods. My chattels, she what? is my house, my household stuff, my field, my barn, what? my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. And here she stands, touch her whoever dare. I'll bring mine action upon the proudest he that stops my way in Padua, Grumio. Draw forth thy weapon. We are beset with thieves. Rescue thy mistress if thou be a man. Fear not, sweet wench. They shall not touch thee, Kate. I'll buckler ah. thee against a million. Ah. <laughs> nay, nay, let them go. A couple of quiet ones. <laughs> when they not quickly, I should die with laughing. <laughs> of all mad matches, never was the like. 
<laughs> Mistress, what's your opinion of your sister? I warned him, Petruchio is cated. <laughs> Papers and friends. The bride and bridegroom wants for to supply the places of the table. You know there wants no junkets at the feast. Lucentio, you shall supply the bridegroom's place and let Bianca take her sister's room. Shall sweet Bianca practice how to bride it? She shall, Lucentio. Come, gentlemen, let's go. Fie, fie on all tear jades and all mad masters and all foul ways. Was ever man so beaten? Was ever man so rayed? Was ever man so weary? <sighs> I am sent before to make a fire and they are coming after to warm them. Now, were I not a little pot and soon hot, my very lips might freeze to my teeth my tongue to the roof of my mouth and my heart in my belly ere I should come by a fire to thaw me. But I with blowing the fire shall warm myself for considering the weather, a taller man than I will take cold. Ah, oh, Curtis. Who is it called so coldly? Piece of ice. If thou doubt it, thou mayest slide from my shoulder to my heel with no greater a run but my head to my neck. A fire, good Curtis. Is my master and his wife coming, Grumio? Oh, aye, Curtis, aye, and therefore fire, fire, cast on no water. Is she so hot a shrew as she's reported? Mm, she was, good Curtis, before this frost. But thou knowst winter tames man, woman, and beast, for it hath tamed my old master and my new mistress and myself, fellow Curtis. Away, you three-inch fool, I'm no beast. Oh, am I but three inches? Why, thy horn is a foot, and so long am I at the least. But wilt thou make a fire, or shall I complain on thee to our mistress, whose hand, she now being at hand, thou shalt soon feel to thy cold comfort for being slow in thy hot office? I pray thee, good Grumio, tell me, how goes the world? Oh, it's a cold world, Curtis. In every office but thine, and therefore fire. Do thy duty, and have thy duty, for my master and mistress are almost frozen to death. There's the fire ready. And therefore, good Grumio, the news. Oh, I, Jack boy, ho oh boy, and as much news as wilt thou. How come you are so full of coney catching? Oh, why, therefore, fire, for I have caught extreme cold. <sighs> Where's the cook? Is supper ready? The house trimmed, rushes, strewed, cobwebs, swept, the serving men in their new Faustian, their white stockings, and every officer's wedding garment on? Be the jacks fair within, the gills fair without, the carpets laid, and everything in order? All ready, and therefore, I pray thee, news. First, know my ho horse is tired. My master and mistress fallen out. How? Out of their saddles, into the dirt, and thereby hangs a tail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have to do Grumio. <laughs> Lend thine ear. Yep. <laughs> There. Ah, ah. <laughs> this is just to feel a tale, not to hear a tale. Oh, and therefore it is called a sensible tale. <laughs> and this cuff but was but to knock at your ear and beseech listening. Now, begin. In primus, we came down a foul hill, my master riding behind my mistress. Both of one horse? Well, what's that to thee? Why a horse? Well, tell that thou the tale. But hadst thou not crossed me, thou shouldst have heard how her horse 
fell and she under her horse thou should hast heard in how miry a place how she was bemoiled how he left her with the horse upon her how he beat me because her horse oh. stumbled and how she waded through the dirt to pluck him off me and how he swore how she prayed that never prayed before how i cried <laughs> i mean how the horses ran away and oh. how the bridle was burst but i lost my crupper with many things of worthy memory which now shall die in oblivion thou returned unexperienced to thy grave by this reckoning he is more shrew than she <laughs> Aye. and that thou and the proudest of you shall find when he comes home oh. but what talk of this what talk i have this call forth nathaniel Joseph, Nicholas, Philip, Walter, Sugarsop, and the rest. Let their heads be slickly combed, their blue coats brushed, and their garters of an indifferent knit. Let them curtsy with their left legs and not presume to touch a hair of my master's horse tail till they kiss their hands. Are they all ready? They are. Call them forth. Do you hear, ho? You must meet my master to countenance my mistress. Why, she hath a face of her own. Who knows about that? Well, thou, it seems, that calls for company to countenance her. I call them forth to credit her. Why, she comes to borrow nothing of them. Uh, welcome home, Grumio. <laughs> uh, how now, Grumio? <laughs> what? Romeo. <laughs> Hello, Grumio. Oh, now, old lad. <laughs> oh, welcome you. How now, you? What you, fellow you? And thus is much for greeting. Now, my spruce companions, is all ready and all things neat? All things is ready. How near is our master? Oh, even at hand, alighted by this, and therefore be not. Oh, Cox, passion, silence, I hear my master. Where be these knaves? What? No man at door to hold my stirrup, nor to take my horse? Where is Nathaniel? Gregory, Philip? Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. Here, here, sir. Here, sir. Here, sir. You logger-headed and unpolished grooms. What? No attendance, no regard, no duty. Where is the foolish knave I sent before? Uh, here, sir, as foolish as I was before. You peasant swain, you horse and malt horse drudge, did I not bid thee meet me in the park and bring along these rascal knaves with thee? Uh, well, Nathaniel's coat, sir, was not fully made, and Gabriel's pumps were all unpinked in the heel, and, and there was no link to color Peter's hat, and Walter's dagger was not come from sheathing. There were there were none, but fine Adam, Rafe, and Gregory, the rest were ragged, old, and beggarly, yet as they are here, they come to meet you. Go, rascals, go, and fetch my supper in. <laughs> Where is the life that late I led? Where are the... Oh, sit down, Kate, and welcome. Soon, 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 soon. Why, when, I say? <laughs> Nay, good, sweet Kate, be merry. Off with my boots, you rogues. You villains, when? It was the friar of orders gray as he forth walked on his way. Ah, ouch, you rogue, you pluck my foot or I take that and mend the plucking of the other. Be merry, Kate. Some water here, what ho? Where's my spaniel Troilus? Get you hence, and bid my cousin Ferdinand come hither, one, Kate, that you must kiss and be acquainted with. Where are my slippers? <laughs> Shall I have some water? <laughs> come, Kate, and wash, and welcome heartily. You horse and villain, will you let it fall? Oh, patience, I pray you, it was a fault unwilling. A horse and beetle-headed, flap-eared knave. Come, come, Kate, sit down. I know you have a stomach. Will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? What, what is I, this? Mutton? I. 
Who brought it? Uh, I. Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? How durst you villains bring it from the dresser and serve it thus to me that love it not? There, take it to you, trenchers, cups and all. You heedless joltheads and unmannered slaves. What, do you grumble? I'll be with you straight. I pray you, husband, be not so disquiet. The meat was well if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate, twas burnt and dried away, and I expressly am forbid to touch it, for it engenders choler, planteth anger, and better twere that both of us did fast, since ourselves, ourselves are choleric, than feed it with such over-roasted flesh. I'm hungry. Be patient, tomorrow it shall be mended, and for this night, We'll fast for company. Come, I'll bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Ugh. Peter, didst ever see the like? He kills her in his er, in her own humor. Where is he? In her chamber, making a sermon of continency to her. <laughs> rails and swears and rates that she poor soul knows not which way to stand to look to speak and sits, sits as one new risen from a dream oh wait oh wait he's coming in <clears throat> thus have i politically begun my reign and tis my hope to end successfully my falcon now is sharp and passing empty until she stoop, she must not be full gorged, for then she never looks upon her lure. Another way I have to man my haggard, to make her come and know her keeper's call, that is, to watch her as we watch these kites that bait and beat and will not be obedient. <clears throat> she eat no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not, as with the meat some undeserved fault I'll find with the making of the bed. And here I'll fling the pillow, and there the bolster, this way the coverlet, another way the sheets. I, and amid this hurly, I intend that all is done in reverend care of her. And in conclusion, she shall watch all night. And if she chance to nod, I'll rail and brawl, and with the clamor keep her still awake. This is a way to kill a wife with kindness and thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. He that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak, tis charity to shew. Is't possible, friend Licio, that Mistress Bianca doth fancy any other but Lucentio? I tell you, sir, she bears me fair in hand. Yeah. To satisfy you in what I have said, stand by and mark the manner of his teaching. Now, um, mistress, uh, profits you in what you read? Read you, first resolve me that. I read that I profess the art to love. May it prove, sir, master of your art. Well, you, sweet dear, prove mistress of my heart. Quick procedure, Mary. Now tell me, I pray, you that durst swear that your mistress Bianca loves none in the world so well as Lucentio. Oh, despiteful love, unconstant womankind, I tell thee, Licio, this is wonderful. Mistake no more. I am not Licio, nor a musician, although I play it sweetly, as I seemed to be, but one that scorned to live in this disguise, for such a one as leaves a gentleman and makes a god of such a cullion. No, sir, that I am called Hortensio. Signor Hortensio, I, I have often heard of your entire affection to Bianca, and since mine eyes are witness of her likeness, I will with you 
if you be so contented, forswear Bianca and her love forever. See how they kiss and court. Signor, Signor Lucentio, here is my hand. And here I firmly vow never to woo her more, but to forswear her as one unworthy all the former favors that I have fondly flattered her with all. And here I take the like unfeigned oath never to marry with her, though she would entreat. Fie on her! See how beastly she doth court him! Would all the world, but we had quite forsworn. For me, that I may surely keep mine oath, I will be married to a wealthy widow. Ere three days pass, which hath as long loved me as I have loved this proud, disdainful haggard. And so, farewell, Signor Lucentio. Kindness in women, not their beauteous looks, shall win my love. And so I take my leave, in resolution, as I swore before. <sighs> Mistress Bianca, bless you with such grace as longeth to a lover's blessed case. Nay, I have ta'en you napping, gentle love, and have forsworn you with Hortensio. Honey, are you jest? Have you both forsworn me? <laughs> Mistress, we have. Then we are rid of Licio. If faith, he'll have a lusty widow now that shall be wooed and wedded in a day. God gave him joy. <laughs> Aye, and he'll tame her. He says so, Tronio? Oh, Faith, he is gone unto the taming school. The taming school? Is that such a place? Aye, mitri mistress. And Petruchio is the master that teacheth tricks eleven and twenty long to tame a shrew and charm her chattering tongue. Oh, master, dude, I have watched so long that I am dog weary. But at last I spied an ancient angel coming down the hill. We'll serve the turn. What, what is he, Biondello? Master, a marketant or a pedant. I know not what, but formal in apparel, in gait, in countenance, surely like a father. And, and what of him, Tranio? If he be credulous and trust my tale, I'll make him glad to seem Vincentio and give assurance to Baptista Minola as if he were the right Vincentio. Take in your love and then let me alone. <clears throat> God save you, sir. And you, sir, you are welcome. Travel you far on or are you at the farthest? Sir, at the farthest for a week or two. But then up farther and as far as Rome, and so to Tripoli, if God lend me life. Uh, what countrymen, I pray? Of Mantua. Of Mantua, sir. Mm. Oh, Mary, God forbid, and come to Padua, careless of your life. My life, sir? How I pray, for that goes hard. Tis death for any one in Mantua to come to Padua. Know you not the cause? Your ships are stayed at Venice, and the Duke, for private quarrel twixt your Duke and him, hath published and proclaimed it openly. Tis marvel, but that you are but newly come. You might have heard it else proclaimed about. Alas, sir, it is worse for me than so, for I have bills for money by exchange from Florence, and must here deliver them. Well, sir, to do you courtesy, this will I do, and this I will advise you. First, tell me, have you ever been at Pisa? Aye, sir, in Pisa have I often been. Uh, Pisa, renowned for grave citizens. A among them know you one Vincentio? I know him not, but I have heard of him, a merchant of incomparable wealth. He is my father, sir. And sooth to say, in countenance, somewhat doth resemble you. As much as an apple doth an oyster, all and all one. <laughs> to save your life in this extremity, this favor will I do you for his sake. And think it not the worst of all your fortunes, that you are like to serve Vincentio. His name and credit shall you undertake. And in my house you shall be friendly lodged. Hmm? Look that you take upon you as you should. You understand me, sir? You shall stay 
till you have done your business in the city, if this curtsy, sir, you accept of it. Oh, sir, I do, and will repute you ever the patron of my life and liberty. Then go with me to make the matter good. This, by the way, I will, I let you understand. My father is here looked for every day to pass assurance of a dower in marriage twixt me and one Baptista's daughter here. In all these circumstances, I'll instruct you. Go with me to clothe you as becomes you. No, no, forsooth, I dare not for my life. Please, the more my wrong, the more his spite appears. What, did he marry me to famish me? Beggars that come unto my father's door upon entreaty have a present alms. If not elsewhere, they meet with charity. But I, who never knew how to entreat, nor never needed that I should entreat, am starved for meat, and I'm giddy for lack of sleep, with oaths kept waking, and with brawling fed, and that which spites me more than all these wants, he says he does it under the name of perfect love, as who should say, if I should eat or sleep, toward deadly sickness or else present death. I prithee, go and get me some repast. I care not what it is, so it be wholesome food. Mm. Food. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. What say you to a neat's foot? Oh, it's pa passing good. Prithee, let me have it. Mm. Yeah. I fear it is too choleric a meat. <laughs> How say you to a fat tripe finely broiled mm, yes i like that well good groomio please fetch it me yeah Ooh, i cannot tell i fear tis choleric what say you to a piece of uh, beef and mustard that's a dish i i love to feed upon I, yeah but, but the mustard is a little too hot why then the just the beef and let the mustard rest oh no nay then i will not you shall you shall have the mustard or else you get no beef of Grumio. Well, then both or one or anything you will. Why then the mustard without the beef? <sighs> Go and get thee gone, thou false deluding slave. Go! That feeds me with the very name of meat. Sorrow on thee and all the pack of you that triumph thus upon my misery. Go, you go, go. Get thee gone, I say. Go. How fares my Kate? What, sweeting, all a mort? Mistress, what cheer? Faith as cold can be. Pluck up thy spirits. Look cheerfully upon me. Here, love, thou seest how diligent I am to address thy meat myself and bring it thee? <laughs> I am sure, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. What, not a word? <laughs> Nay, then thou lovest it not, and all my pains is sorted to no proof. Here, take away the dish. No, 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 I pray you, let it, let, 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 let it stand. Uh, the poorest service is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch the meat. No, 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 thank you, sir. Signor Petruccio, fie, you are to blame. Come, Mistress Kate, I'll bear you company. Eat it up all, Hortensio, if thou lovest me. Much good do it unto thy gentle heart. Kate, eat apace, and now, my honey love, will we return unto thy father's house and revel it as bravely as the best with silken coats and caps and golden rings, with ruffs and cuffs and fardingales and th things, with scarves and fans and double change of bravery, with amber bracelets, uh, beads, and all this knavery. What? Hast thou dined? No, <laughs> the I tailor think. stays thy leisure to deck thy body with his ruffling treasure. Come, tailor, let us see these ornaments. Lay forth the gown. Uh, what news with you, sir? Here is the cap your worship did bespeak. Why, this was molded on a porringer, a velvet dish. Fie, fie, tis lewd and filthy. Why, tis a Cockle or a walnut shell, a knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap, away with it! Come, let me have a bigger! 
I'll have no bigger. This does fit the time. And gentlewomen wear such caps as those. When you are gentle, you shall have one too. And not till then. I will not be in haste. Why, sir, I trust I may have leave to speak. And speak I will, okay? I am no child, no babe. Your betters have endured me to say my mind, and if you cannot, well, best to stop your ears. My tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart, concealing, it will break. And rather than it shall, I will be free, even to the uttermost, as I please, in my words. Why thou sayest true, it is a paltry cap. A custard coffin, a, a bauble, a silken pie. I love thee well in that thou likest it not. Love me or love me not. I like the cap and I will have it or I will have none. Thy gown? Yeah. Why, I Come, Taylor, let us see it. <clears throat> oh, 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 mercy. God, what masking stuff is here. What is this? A sleeve? Tis like a demi cannon. What? Up and, and down, carved like an apple tart. Here, snip and nip and cut and slish and slash like to a censor in a barber's shop. Why, what a devil's name, Taylor, callst thou this? I see she's like to have neither cap nor gown. You bid me make it orderly and well, according to the fashion and the time. Mary, and did, but if you be remembered, I did not bid you mar it to the time. <gasps> Go, hop me over every kennel home, for you shall hop without my custom, sir. I'll none of it. Hence, make your best of it. Hey, 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 I never saw a better fashioned gown. More quaint, more pleasing, nor more commendable. Be you, you mean to... Make a puppet of me? Why, true. He means to make a puppet of thee. He says that your worship means to make a puppet of her. Oh, monstrous arrogance. Thou liest, thou thread, thou thimble, thou yard, three quarters, half yard, quarter, nail, thou flea, thou knit, thou winter cricket, thou braved in mine own house with a skein of thread. Away, thou rag, thou quantity, thou remnant, or I shall so bemeet thee with thy yard as thou shalt think on prating whilst thou livest. I tell thee, I, that thou hast marred her gown. And now your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as my master had it in her direction. Grumio gave order how it should be done. <laughs> uh, no, I gave, I gave him no order. I, I gave him the stuff. But how did you desire it should be made? Oh. Well, Mary, sir, with needle and, and thread. Oh, but did you not request to have it cut? Well, thou hast faced many things. I have. Well, face not me. Thou hast braved many men. Brave not me. I will neither be faced nor braved. I say unto thee, I bid thy master cut out the gown, but I did not bid him cut it to pieces, ere the go thou liest. Why, here is the note of the fashion to testify. Huh? Read it. Ah, uh, <laughs> the note lies in his throat if he says I said so. Ahem, in premise, a loose body the gown. Master, if I ever said loose body gown, sew me in the skirts of it and beat me to death with the bottom of a brown thread, I said a gown. Proceed. With a small compass to cape. No, I confess to the cape. <clears throat> with a, a trunk sleeve. No, I confess two sleeves. Two. Two. The sleeves are curiously cut. Ha, ah, there's the villainy. Why, ah, ah, error in the bill, sir, error in the bill. I commanded the sleeves should be cut out and sewed up again, and I'll prove upon thee, though thy little finger be armed in a thimble. This is a true that I say, and I had thee in place where that thou shouldst not know it. I am for thee straight. Take thou the bill, give me thy meat yard, and spare not me. God have mercy, Grumio, then he shall have no odds. Well, sir, in brief, the gown is not for me. Oh, you, you are in the right, sir. It is for my mistress. Go take it up unto thy master's use. Oh, villain, not for thy life. Take up my mistress's gown for thy master's use. 
Why, sir, what's your conceit in that? Oh, sir, the conceit is deeper than you think for. Take up my mistress gown to his master's use. Oh, fie, fie, fie. Hortensio, say thou wilt see the tailor paid. Go take it hence, be gone, and say no more. Tailor, I'll pay thee for thy gown tomorrow. Take no unkindness of his hasty words. Away, I say, commend me to thy master. Well, come. My Kate, we will unto your fathers, even in these honest, mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud, our garments poor. For tis the mind that makes the body rich, and as the sun breaks through the darkest clouds, so honor peereth in the meanest habit. What, is the jay more precious than the lark because his feathers are more beautiful? Or is the adder better than the eel because his painted skin contents the eye? No, good Kate, neither art thou the worse for this poor furniture and mean array. If thou accountedst it shame, lay it on me. And therefore, frolic, we will henceforth with to feast and sport us at thy father's house. Go. Call my men, and let us straight to him, and bring our horses unto Long Lane, and there will we mount, and thither walk on foot. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think tis now some seven o'clock, and, well, we may come there by dinner time. I, uh, I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two, and twill be supper time ere you come there. It shall be seven ere I go to horse. Look what I speak. Or, or do, or think to do, you are still crossing it. Sirs, let alone, I will not go today. And ere I do, it shall be what o'clock I say it is. Why so, this gallant will command the sun. Sir, this is the house. Please it you that I call. Uh, I, what else? And bet I be deceived, Signor Baptista may remember me, near twenty years ago in Genoa, where we were lodgers at the Pegasus. Tis well, and, and hold your own in any case with such austerity as longeth to a father. I warrant you, but sir, here comes your boy, twere good he were schooled. Fear you not him. Sir Biandello, now do your duty thoroughly, I advise you. Imagine twere the right Vincentio. Hmm? Biondello, Biondello, can you hear me, boy? Aye, sir, aye, sir. What, didst Touch, thou hear fear me? me not, fear not me. But hast thou done thy errand to Baptista? I told him that your father was at Venice and that you looked for him this day in Padua. Thou'rt a tall fellow. Hold thee that to drink. Here comes Baptista. Set your countenance, sir. <clears throat> Signor Baptista, you are happily met. Uh, sir, this is the gentleman I told you of. I pray you stand good father to me now. Give me Bianca for my patrimony. A soft done. Sir, by your leave, having come to Padua to gather in some debts, my son Lucentio made me acquainted with a, a weighty cause of love between your daughter and himself. And for the good report I hear of you, and for the love he beareth to your daughter, and she to him, to stay him not too long, I am content in a good father's care to have him matched. And if you please to like no worse than I, upon some agreement, me shall you find ready and willing with one consent to have her so bestowed. For curious, I cannot be with you, Signor Baptista, of whom I hear so well. Sir, pardon me in what I have to say. <clears throat> your plainness and your shortness please me well. Right true it is, your son Lucentio here doth love my daughter, and she loveth him. For both dissemble deeply their affections. And therefore, if you say no more than this, that like you, like a father, you will deal with him and pass my daughter a sufficient dower. The match is made and all is done. Your son shall have my daughter with consent. I thank you, sir. Where then do you know best we be affide and such assurance tain as shall with either part agreement stand? Uh, <laughs> not in my house, Lucentio. Uh, for you know, pitchers have ears and I have many servants. 
Besides, old Gremio is harking still and happily we must be interrupted. Then at my lodging, and it like you, there doth my father lie, and there this night will pass the business privately and well. Send for your daughter by your servant here. My boy shall fetch the scrivener presently. Mm. The worse is this, that at so slender warning you are like to have a thin and slender pittance. Uh, it likes me well, Cambio. Hie you home, and bid Bianca make her ready straight. And if you will, tell uh, what hath happened. Lucentio's father is arrived in Padua, and how she's like to be Lucentio's wife. I pray the gods she may with all my heart. And dally not with the gods, but get thee gone. Signor Baptista, shall I lead the way? Welcome. One mess is like to be your cheer. Come, sir, we will better it in Pisa. I follow you. Cambia. What sayest thou? Oh. Biandello. You saw my master wink and laugh upon you. Uh, Biandello, uh, what of that? Oh, faith, nothing. But he has left me here behind to expound the meaning or moral of his signs and tokens. I pray thee, moralize them. Then thus. Um, Baptista is safe, talking with the deceiving father of a deceitful son. And, and what of him? Uh, his daughter is to be brought by you to the supper. And then? The old priest of St. Luke's Church is at your command at all hours. And what of all this? Uh, I cannot tell, except they are busied about with a counterfeit assurance. Take you assurance of her, Com provigilio ad imprimendum solum to the church, take the priest, clerk, and some sufficient honest witnesses. If this be not that you look for, I have no more to say. But bid Bianca farewell forever and a day. <laughs> Hearst thou, Biandello? I cannot tarry. I knew a wench married in an afternoon as she went to the garden for parsley to stuff a rabbit. And so may you, sir. And so would you, sir. My master hath appointed me to go to St. Luke's to bid the priest be ready to come against you. Come with your appendix. <laughs> I may and will, if she be so contented. She will be pleased. Then wherefore should I doubt? <laughs> Hap what hap may, I'll roundly go about her. It shall go hard if Cambio go without her. Come on, a God's name, once more toward our fathers. Good Lord, how bright and goodly shines the moon. <laughs> the moon? The sun, it is not moonlight now. I say it is the moon that shines so bright. I know it is the sun that shines so bright. Now by my mother's sun, and that's myself, it shall be moon or star or what I list or ere I journey to your father's house. Go on, fetch our horses back again. Evermore what? crossed and crossed, nothing but crossed. Say as he says, or we shall never go. Forward, I pray, since we have come so far. And be it moon, or sun, or what you please, and if you please to call it a rush candle, henceforth I vow it shall be so with me. I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. <gasps> Nay, then you lie. It is the blessed sun. Oh, then God be blessed. It is the blessed sun. But sun it is not when you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. <laughs> and what you have it named, even that it is. And so it shall be so for Catherine. 
Petruchio, go thy ways. The field is won. Well, forward, forward. Thus the bowl should run, and not unluckily against the bias, but soft company is coming here. Good morrow, gentle mistress. Where away? Uh, tell me, sweet Kate, and tell me truly too, hast thou beheld a fresher gentlewoman, such war of white and red within her cheeks? What stars do spangle heaven with such beauty as those two eyes become that heavenly face? <laughs> Fair lovely maid, once more good day to thee. Sweet Kate, embrace her for her beauty's sake. He'll make the man mad to make a woman of him. Young, budding virgin, fresh and fair and sweet, whither away? Oh, where is thy abode? Happy the parents of so fair a child. Happier the man whom favorable stars allots thee for his bedfellow. <laughs> Why, how now, Kate? I hope thou art not mad. This is a man. Old, wrinkled, faded, withered, and not a maiden as thou sayest he is. What? A pardoned old father. Ha! My mistaking eyes that have been so uh, bedazzled with the sun that everything I look on seemeth green. Now I perceive thou art a reverend father. Pardon, I pray, for my mad mistaking. Do, good old grandsire, and withal make known which way thou travelst. If along with us, we shall be joyful of thy company. Fair sir, and you, my merry mistress, uh, that with your strange encounter much amazed me. Uh, my name is called Vincentio, my dwelling Pisa and bound I am to Padua, there to visit a son of mine, which long I have not seen. What's his name? Lucentio, gentle sir. Happily met, the happier for thy son. And now, by law, as well as reverend age, I may entitle thee my loving father, the sister to my wife, this gentlewoman, thy son by this hath married. Wonder not, nor be not grieved, she is of good esteem, her dowry wealthy, and of worthy birth. Beside, so qualified as may beseem the spouse of any noble gentleman. Let me embrace with old Vincentio, and wander we to see thy honest son, who will of thy arrival be full joyous. But is this true? Or is it else your pleasure like pre pleasant travelers to break a jest upon the company you overtake? I do assure thee, father, so it is. Come, go along and see the truth hereof, for our first merriment hath made thee jealous. Well, Petruchio, this has put me in heart. Have to my widow, if she be forward, then hast thou taught Hortensio to be untoward. Softly and swiftly, sir, for the priest is ready. I fly, Biondello, but they may chance to need thee at home. Therefore, leave us. Nay, faith, I'll see thee to the church, to your back, and then come back to my masters as soon as I can. I marvel Cameo comes not all this while. <laughs> uh. Sir, here's the door. This is Lucentio's house. My father's bears more toward the marketplace, thither must I, and here I leave you, sir. Oh, you shall not choose but drink before you go. I think I shall command your welcome here, and by all likelihood some cheer is toward. They're busy within you were best knock louder. <laughs> What's he that knocks as he would beat down the gate? Is Signor Lucentio within, sir? He's within, sir, but not to be spoken with all. What if a man bring him a hundred pound or two to make merry with all? Keep your hundred pounds to yourself. He shall need none so long as I live. Nay, I told your son was well beloved in Padua. Do you hear, sir, to leave frivolous circumstances? I, I pray you tell Signor Lucentio that his father is come from Pisa and is here at the door to speak with him. Thou liest. His father is come from Padua and here looking out at the window. 
Art thou his father? Aye, sir. So his mother says, if I may believe her. Why, how now, gentlemen? Why, this is flat knavery to take upon you another man's name. Lay hands on the villain. I believe he means to cousin somebody in this city under my countenance. I have seen them in the church together. God send them good shipping. But who is here? Mine old master Vincentio. Now are we undone and brought to nothing. Come hither, crack hemp. I, 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 I hope I may choose, sir. Come hither, you rogue. What? Have you forgot me? Oh, forgot you? No, sir. I could not forget you, for I never saw you before in all my life. What? You notorious villain, didst thou never see thy master's father, Vincentio? What? My old worshipful old master? Yes, Mary, sir. See where he looks out the window. Is so indeed. Oh, oh help, help. Here is a madman who will murder me. Help, son, help, Signor Baptista. Prithee, Kate, let's stand aside and see the end of this controversy. Sir, what are you that offer to beat my servant? What am I, sir? Nay, what are you, sir? Oh, immortal gods, a fine villain. A silken doublet, a velvet hose, a scarlet cloak, and a copatane hat. I'm oh, I am that. undone. Uh, I am undone. While I play the good husband at home, my son and my servant spend all at the university. How now? What's the matter? What? Is the man lunatic? Sir, you seem a sober ancient gentleman by your habit, but your words show you a madman. Why, sir, what cerns it you if I wear pearl and gold? I thank my good father, I am able to maintain it. My father? Oh, villain, he is a sailmaker in Bergamo. <laughs> you mistake, sir, you mistake, sir. Pray, what do you think is his name? <laughs> his name? As if I knew not his name. I have brought him up ever since he was three years old, and his name is Tranio. Away, away, mad ass. His name is Lucentio, and he is mine only son and heir to the lands of me, Signor Vincentio. Mm -hmm. Lucentio? Oh, he hath murdered his master. Lay hold on him. I charge you in the Duke's name. Oh, my son, my son. Tell me, thou villain, where is my son, Lucentio? Call forth an officer. Carry this mad knave to the jail. Father Baptista, I charge you see that he be forthcoming. Carry me to the jail? Stay, he, he shall not go to prison. Talk not, Signor Gremio. I say he shall go to prison. Take heed, Signor Battista, lest you be coney catched in this business. I dare swear this is the right Vincentio. Swear if thou darest. Uh, nay, I dare not swear it. Then thou wert best say that I am not Luce Lucentio. Yes, I, I know thee to be Signor Lucentio. Away with the daughter, to the jail with him. Thus. Strangers may be hailed and abused, oh, monstrous villain. Spoiled, and yonder he is. Deny him, forswear him, or else we are all undone. Pardon, sweet father. Lives, my sweet son. Pardon, Father. How hast thou offended? Where is Lucentio? Here's Lucentio, right son to the right Vincentio, that have by marriage made thy daughter mine, while counterfeit supposes bleared thine eyne. Here's a packing with a witness to deceive us all. Where is that damned villain Tranio that faced and braved me in this matter so? Why, tell me, is not this my cambio? Cambio is changed into Lucentio. Love wrought these miracles. Bianca's love made me exchange my state with Tranio, while he did bear my countenance in the town, and happily I have arrived at the last under the wished haven of my bliss. 
What Tranio did, myself enforced him to. Then pardon him, sweet father, for my sake. I'll slit the villain's nose that would have sent me to the jail. Please, God, no. What do you hear, sir? Have you married my daughter without asking my goodwill? You fear not, Baptista. We will content you. Go to. But I will in to be revenged for this villainy. And I to sound the depth of this knavery. <sighs> Look not pale, Bianca. Th thy father will not frown. Uh, my cake is dough, but I'll in among the rest out of hope of all but my share of the feast. Oh, food. Husband, let's follow to see the end of this ado. First, kiss me, Kate, and we will. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, in the middle of the street. What, art thou ashamed of me? No, sir. God forbid. I'm just, a, you know, just ashamed to kiss. Why? Then let's home again. Come, sir, let's away. <laughs> nay, nay. I will give thee a kiss. Now, pray thee, love, stay. <laughs> Is not this well? Come, my sweet Kate. <laughs> Better once than never, for never too late. Mm. At last, though long, our jarring notes agree. And time it is, when raging war is done, to smile at scapes and perils overblown. My fair Bianca, bid my father welcome, while I, with self-same kindness, welcome thine. Brother Petruchio, sister Katharina, and thou, Hortensio, with thy loving widow, feast with the best and welcome to my house. My banquet is to close our stomachs up after our great good cheer. Pray you, sit down, for now we sit to chat, as well as eat. Nothing but sit and sit and eat and eat. Padua affords this kindness, son Petruchio. Padua affords nothing but what is kind. For both our sakes, I would that word were true. Now for my life, Hortensio fears his widow. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never trust me if I be feared. <laughs> you are very sensible, and yet you miss my sense. I mean, Hortensio is afeard of you. Oh, he that is giddy thinks the world turns round. Roundly replied. Mistress, how mean you that? Thus I conceive by him. <laughs> Conceives by me? Woo! <laughs> how likes that, Hortensio? <laughs> My widow says, thus she conceives her tale. Oh, very well mended. Kiss him for that, good widow. He that is giddy thinks the world turns round. Mm. I pray you tell me what you meant by that. Your husband being troubled with a shrew measures my husband's sorrow by his woe. And now you know my meaning. <laughs> well, a very mean meaning. Oh, right. I mean you. And I am mean, indeed, respecting you. To her, Kate. To her, widow. A hundred marks my Kate does put her down. That's my office. Spoke like an officer. Ha! To thee, lad. How likes Grimmiel these quick-witted folks? Believe me, sir, they butt together well. <laughs> head and butt. A hasty witted body would say your head and butt were head and horn. I, Mistress Bride, hath that awakened you? I but not frighten me, therefore I will sleep again. Nay, that you shall not, since you have begun, have at you for a bitter jest or two. Am I your bird? I mean, then to shift my bush and then pursue me as you draw your bow. 
You're welcome all. Hmm. She hath prevented me. Uh, here, Senior Tranio, this bird you aimed at, though you hit her not, therefore a health to all that shot and miss. another one. Oh, sir, Lucentio slipped me like his greyhound, which runs himself and catches for his master. A good swift simile, but something currish. It is well, sir, that you hunted for yourself. Tis thought your deer does hold you at a bay. Oh, ho, oh, Petruchio, Tranio hits you now. <laughs> I thank thee for that gird, good Tranio. Uh, confess, confess. Hath he not hit you there? As a little galled me, I confess, and as the jest did glance away from me, tis ten to one it maimed you two outright. Oh, now in good sadness, son Petruchio, I think thou hast the veriest shrew of all. Well, I say no, and therefore for assurance, let's each one send unto his wife, and he whose wife is most obedient to come at first when he doth send for her, shall win the wager which we will propose. Content, what's the wager? 20 crowns. 20 crowns. I'll venture so much on my hawk or hound, but 20 times so much upon my wife. <laughs> A hundred then. Ooh. Content. A match, tis done. Who shall begin? That will I. Go, Biondello, bid your mistress come to me. I go. Son, I'll, I'll be your half. Bianca comes. I'll have no halves. I'll bear it all myself. Mm. How now, Biondello? What news? Sir, my mistress sends you word that she is busy and she cannot come. No! <laughs> uh. oh, she is busy and she cannot come. <laughs> is that an answer? I and a kind one, too. Pray <laughs> God, sir, your wife send you not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I hope a better. Gira Biondello, go and entreat my wife to come to me forthwith. Oh, 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 entreat her. Nay, then she must needs come. I am afraid, sir. Do what you can. Yours will not be entreated. Ah, Biondello, now where's my wife? She says you have some goodly jest in hand. She will not come. She bids you come to her. <laughs> worse and worse, she will not come. <laughs> Vile, intolerable, not to be endured. <laughs> Sira Grumio, go to your mistress. Say, I command her, come to me. I know her answer. What? She will not. <laughs> the fouler fortune mine, and there an end. No, by my holy damn, here comes Katharina. What is your will, sir, that you send for me? Where is your sister and Hortensio's wife? They sit conferring by the parlor fire. Mm. Go fetch them hither. If they deny to come, swinge me them soundly forth unto their husbands. Away, I say, and bring them hither straight. Here is a wonder, if you talk of a wonder. And so it is. I wonder what it bodes. Mary, peace it bodes, and love, and quiet life, an awful rule and right supremacy, and to be short, what not, that's sweet and happy. Now, fair befall thee, good Patricio. The wager thou hast won, and I will add unto it their losses, 20,000 crowns, another dowry to another daughter, for she is changed and she had never been. Nay, I will win my wager better yet and show more sign of her obedience, her new built virtue and obedience. <clears throat> See where she comes and brings your froward wives as prisoners to her womanly persuasion. Catherine, that cap of yours becomes you not off with that bauble, throw it underfoot. Lord, let me never have a cause to sigh till I be brought to such a silly pass. Fie, what a foolish duty call you this? I would your duty were as foolish too. 
The wisdom of your duty, fair Bianca, hath cost me a hundred crowns since supper time. The more fool you for laying on my duty. Catherine, I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands. Oh, come, come, you're mocking. <laughs> we will have no telling. Come on, I say, and first begin with her. Oh, she shall not. I say she shall, and first begin with her. Fie, fie! Unknit that threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the mead, confounds thy fame as whirlwinds shake fair buds, and in no sense is meet or amiable. <laughs> a, a woman moved is like a like a fountain, troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, bereft of beauty, and while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will deign to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign, one that cares for thee. And for thy maintenance, he commits his body to painful labor, both by sea and land, to watch the nights in storms, the day in cold, while thou liest warm at home, secure and safe, and craves no other tribute at thy hands, but love, and fair looks, and true obedience, too little payment for so great a debt. Such duty as the subject owes the prince, even such a woman oweth to her husband. And when she is froward and peevish and sullen and sour and not obedient to his honest will, what is she but a foul contending rebel and a graceless traitor to her loving lord? <sighs> hmm. I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war where they should kneel for peace or seek the rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve and love and obey. Why are our bodies soft and, and smooth and weak, unept to toil and trouble in the world, but that our soft conditions and our hearts should well uh, agree with our external parts? <laughs> Oh, come, <laughs> come, you froward and unable worms. <laughs> hey, my mind has been as big as one of yours. My heart as great, uh, my reason happily more to bandy word for word and frown for frown. But now I, I see that our lances are but straws. Our strength as weak, our weakness past compare, that seeming to be most, which we indeed least are. Then veil your stomachs, for it is no boot, and place your hand below your husband's foot, in token of which duty, if he please, my hand is ready. May it do him ease. Why, there's a wench. Come mm. on and kiss me, Kate. Mm. Well, go thy ways, old lad, for, for thou shalt hat. Tis a good hearing when children are toward, but a harsh hearing when women are froward. Come, Kate, we'll to bed. Mm. We three are married, but you two are sped. <laughs> Twas I won the wager, though you hit the white. And being a winner, God give you good night. Now go thy ways, thou hast tamed a cursed shrew. Tis a wonder. By your leave, she will be tamed so. Okay, everyone. Come on back. Yay! Thank you so much for watching this hilarious and romantic reading. Wasn't it fun? Join us next Saturday as we bring you another wonderful reading. What's it gonna be? Time will tell. All right. Good night, everyone.